Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to pull some oil out of the WRX and send it off for sampling. Uh, used to do this a lot early in the ownership of the car and when I had the Mobile One ESP 5W30, uh, it was really just there to kind of understand how the engine was wearing and how far I could push the oil. Um, haven't done it for a long time and um, about a year ago I installed an oil cooler on the car so I didn't want to do it immediately after because you tend to get a lot of uh, copper following a, an, an addition of an oil cooler and we also switched oils so we went from that mobile one to a Castrol 540 uh, just because we were going to be tracking the car a little bit more and uh, with the additional temps viscosity tends to drop and you get a drop in oil pressure so we switched to something a little bit thicker or more viscous um, so this will be the first one First oil uh, analysis after the oil cooler and after the switch to the 540 oil. Um, so what do you need to pull a sample? Uh, you need a sample pump, which you can get on Amazon. Uh, this one I got from Blackstone Labs. I think they're about 20 bucks. A sample bottle. Um, Blackstone will send you these sample bottles uh, if you are going to be sending them uh, the sample. Uh, the other company you can use is Oil Analyzers. Um, and if you prepay for a kit, they will send you, you know, the shipping label and return label and all that stuff and a bottle. Uh, interestingly enough, the bottles work on pretty much all the uh, sample pumps. Then you'll need a length of hose. Generally, this hose needs to be at least one and a half times longer than the dipstick. And uh, the other thing you want to do is cut the hose at the end at about a 45 degree angle. Um, that's about it. So let's go ahead and pull a sample out of the motor. All right, so all I'm going to do is pull up the dipstick. Um, I've already driven the car, warmed the oil up, so it's nice and kind of mixed together here. Fortunately, I had to let it sit for a split second while we filmed. Ideally, you want to do this right away, um, but that's okay. So pull up the dipstick. Attach my uh, sample container to my pump. Take the side of the hose that isn't slotted or cut at a 45 degree angle. Stick it in, tighten down on it. And then we're gonna just feed this into where the dipstick comes out of the engine. And sometimes it'll get caught as it kind of hits certain things. But if you kind of work it, it'll, it'll kind of get, get past there. Once it's roughly in there, just start pumping. And if you don't get any kind of resistance on the pump, then more than likely you're not getting any oil. So play, again, you play around with the tube, maybe shove it in a little bit further. Nothing there. Still nothing. Maybe we'll stick it in deeper. Come on now. Pull it out some way. I see a little bit of oil vapor coming up, so we just gotta kinda work the tube until it gets to the point where it's actually getting some oil. There we go. Okay, so you don't wanna pump it too much because it'll it's, it's in a vacuum. So once you start to go, it'll flow in. So there's a fill line on the bottle uh, somewhere, but close to the top is good enough. Um, this oil in particular only has about, I think, 900 miles on it, uh, but uh, two track days, um, also with ethanol. 
So very curious to see how the oil performed. And we were seeing oil temps somewhere in the 235, 240 range. So just kind of curious to see how this oil performed and how the car's doing. Just about there. So once we get to the top of the sample container, we're near the top. I think we can go a little more. I'm just going to break this suction here. Cool. That'll stop the pump. You can see the oil is going back down the hose. And pull this out. And cap it off. So I guess if you're super critical, the only caveat here is that we tend to use this pump over and over again. So there's a bit of cross-contamination. Um, but what are you going to do? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and toss this length of hose out. I uh, won't be reusing it. I'm just going to draw it out of the motor here. And that's it. So I'm going to send off this sample. And uh, we'll wait about a week, maybe a week and a half here. And we'll get the results, and then we'll kind of go over them. All right, so it has been about a week. I sent out the oil on Thursday, and today is Friday, and woke up to an email from oil analyzers with the results from the used oil analysis test. Um, and really, it's perfect. There's really nothing to write home about. There's a couple little things you can nitpick at, but it really is not much going on here. Um, so this is actually kind of hard to read. Everything's like sideways. So I have a spreadsheet that I track all of the results on. Um, this is the most recent one. So this is the Castrol Edge 5W40. 11,000 miles on it. I'm sorry, 1,100 miles on it. Engine has almost 60,000, 69,000 miles on it. Um, everything over here, these are all anal um, results from... Uh, mobile one ESP 530 and you can see there's there's notes like uh, it was done by Blackstone 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 OAI uh, miles miles on the oil and then miles on the engine a uh, couple things to note so um, you can see I was testing the mobile one at regular you know, like relatively regular intervals up until about 35,000 miles when I stopped, just because the car was doing fine, the results were looking pretty much the same, and uh, nothing was really changing, so I stopped. And then we added an oil cooler, and decided it was time to start tracking the car harder, and that's when we switched to the 5W40. Um, couple of things that I have been keeping an eye on for the car is one copper, so there was quite a bit of copper in the oil previously. And um, I think maybe some of that was just kind of washing out from a new motor um, from like the, from the factory oil cooler. Uh, I was running relatively extended drain intervals. So four or five, 6,000 miles. And if you think about four or five, 6,000 miles, you know, when you're at 34,000 miles, that means you've only changed the oil maybe seven times, right? Where some guys might at that point have done 10 or 12. Um, so it could be taking a little bit longer to wash out. And you can see in the most recent one at 69,000 miles, copper's gone, which is good to see. The other thing I was keeping track of was nickel. And from all of the analysis reports that I've seen, no one had nickel. And uh, it looks like it's gone again. So maybe it's just watching out from, from, the, from the motor break-in. Um, you know, one test isn't, a I can't draw a definitive conclusion with just one test. So I will test it again here in at the, maybe the later half of 2019 just to confirm. Um, but it is nice to see that copper and nickel have disappeared. I just want to point out MMT manganese. This is from running Octane Booster. Uh, so that's it. Once you run it, like you can see here, this is when I was running it. Um, and it does take time to kind of wash out of the engine completely. So if you're running an octane booster, you're going to see manganese, not MMT. Um, 
you can the other thing that's kind of curious about uh this cashel edge is i was i was looking for molly in this oil and it's not here at all which is interesting i i don't know what that means it's obviously a different formulation than mobile one but there's no molly here and a lot of calcium compared to uh the mobile one esp and i think calcium leads to pre-ignition but uh the motor seems to be fine on it and, and then everything else looks pretty good and pretty solid that's all fine the thing that really caught my eye was let's see here i think it was um the viscosity the cst viscosity so i've got a spreadsheet or i'm sorry a pdf from cashel themselves and viscosity should be about 4.1, 14.1, or CST viscosity should be 14.1 at 100 degrees Celsius, um, and that puts it solidly in a 40 weight oil. And uh, I think anything that's considered 30 weight is like below 12.5. So weight, weight of an oil, just so you guys know, is a range of CST viscosity, right? You could have like a light, uh, 30 weight which might be eight or eight and a half cst and then you could have a heavy 30 weight which is like a 12 or a 12 and a half right and then something like a above a 12 and a half would be like a light 40 weight um so the cash oil was a solid 14.1 so that that's like a solid 40 weight oil and within 1100 miles it dropped to a 30 weight oil and so it sheared uh, and the oil sheared from 1100 miles and most likely due to just track use. So high temps, um, the turbo, um, and, uh, you know, likely if I was to go back to the track in the next month, I would change this oil out because I do want to stay up in the 40 as, as much as possible. Um, obviously when oil gets above hundred degrees Celsius, the weight starts to drop, which is why I switched to a 40 to begin with, because I wanted that additional oil pressure uh, when the oil gets hot. Um, but between now and the next time I go to the track, to me, the oil looks fine, and I'm going to drive it as is. Uh, I don't think there's any problem with that. TBN, total base number, that just gives me an idea of what's left on the additives. I mean, this, this oil has a boatload of additives to begin with, and... Um, 8.84 is perfectly fine, right? We can run this down close to two over one and we're still great. So this oil could go a m way longer, but um, I think I'm just gonna run it until the next track day and, and then do an oil change before we head out. So all in all, the WRX, the engine is healthy. I now have a baseline to check in terms of wear materials for oil starvation uh, and Moving forward, I think we'll track the car to, to maybe like November and then do another oil analysis and see where we stand. Um, so hopefully that's helpful to you guys. Um, just uh, this is kind of the thing, some of the things that I do to just make sure that the car is running healthy. Uh, so as always, thank you guys very much for tuning in and we'll see you at the next video. Take care.